Hey everyone, Zach here from Windows Central and welcome back to another video. Now today we're taking a look at Windows 11 build 21996. This is the first build of Windows 11 that's been leaked at least. Um, so yeah, this is essentially a brand new version of Windows. Microsoft has yet to announce this. They are planning to announce it next week, we believe. Unfortunately for them, the, the surprise has been spoiled because somebody leaked a build early. Uh, and uh, that's what this is. So let's take a look at Windows 11 uh, and what's changed. Now, to be clear, this is not a final build of Windows 11. There's still more stuff to come. Uh, but this does give us an early look at the new starts and taskbar experiences and some other some of the other UI changes that they've been working on internally. But it doesn't give us a look at all of it. There's still stuff missing. Uh, there's still some old UI elements like this volume rocker here, which is still from Windows 8. That's yet to be updated. Um, but as I said, this is uh, sort of a first look really at the start menu and some of the other minor UI changes that they've been working on for Windows 11. Uh, so yes, this is the brand new start menu. It's now centered just like Windows 10 X. Live tiles are gone and in their place uh, is a grid of icons. These are your pinned apps. You can go into your all apps list up here and pin whichever one you like. So if I want to pin, say, Groove Music, I can right click pin to start and that will now pin into the second page since I already have a first page full of apps down here and if I want to move that to the top I can do so and now that is up at the very top there pretty nice uh, below that is our recommended area which is essentially timeline but much more useful it shows you your recently installed apps as well as recently opened documents in Microsoft Office um, and I think recently opened photos as well uh, so yeah here we are here's the recommended page and you can see here that I have my OneNote here I have a, a Word document and our recently installed apps if I click on more you'll see that that just gives me an even longer list of stuff that I've recently opened which uh, is super nice uh, there's a brand new app here called Get Started which I think we just saw in the recommended page here this doesn't really do anything right now, I don't think, uh, but um, I think it's supposed to walk you through the new Windows 11 UX, even though that's the Windows 10 UX. Let's press get started. Uh, it's telling us all about our new files. And yes, here you can see that there is a get the update button. As I said, this isn't final. Microsoft still has more stuff to add here. Uh, so when this button is ready, I'm sure when you click on it, it will take you to Windows updates where you'll be able to get the latest bits as well as the latest user experience changes and whatnot. And there you are, we're all set. So that's the, that's the Get Started app on Windows 11, which I don't think is final. A lot of that imagery was old, but you get the point. Uh, you may have also noticed it, uh, app windows are now rounded. They have round corners and they look really nice. Uh, and also the animations involved with just minimizing and maximizing apps are much nicer. If I minimize this app here, you'll see that the animation looks nice. If I maximize it, you'll see that... Um, the animations improve there as well. It's a lot more fluid now, much more smoother, which is super nice. Uh, and also the animation involved in snapping is also uh, much improved as well, which is super cool. Uh, there's also a new snapping assist tool for cursors. So if we sort of hover over the maximize button here, you'll see this drop down menu, which gives you a different, a bunch of different grids. So I can say I want to snap this app to that side and then I can open up a different app here, such as the store, and I can snap that on that side. So it's just the same thing as essentially using your cursor to drag it to the edge of the screen. But now you no longer have to do that. You can just hover over the window controls and snap wherever you'd like, which is super cool. Oh, we should also probably talk about the taskbar. The taskbar is essentially brand new, although this system tray is still the old system tray. I assume they're going to update this. Um, it looks really out of place with the rest of the Windows 11 UX. But as of right now, uh, what we really want to talk about is the is the centered taskbar UX down here, which is, as I said, now centered. You can customize it. So if we press on taskbar settings here, we can show and hide all of the system buttons here, which include search, uh, task view, and widgets, which we'll get to in a second. But the big deal to me is that you can now finally, finally, turn off the show desktop button. This little line down here in the bottom right hand corner of the taskbar, that's been there for many, many years now. I think as early as Windows 7, if not before that. Uh, and you've never been able to disable it even if you never used the feature, but now you finally can. And all that does is get rid of that line and make the taskbar system tray look much cleaner, which is super fun. Uh, of course, uh, the taskbar is centered, but you can still left align it if that's something you prefer by pressing that there. And now the start button as well as the search UI and whatnot will show up on the left, just like old versions of Windows, if that's what you prefer. We also have a new search UI, which is kind of new. Microsoft sort of 
tested this a little while ago uh by a little i mean a couple of years ago they never shipped it but now it's here on windows 11 and this is what it looks like i think it looks quite nice if i search for an app if i search for windows for example you'll see that i get all of my sort of apps here my best matches settings and of course searching the web not too different from the windows 10 search ux but still different enough i think this looks really nice then we have task view which is brand new uh with virtual desktops of course um Timeline is gone. It's no longer in task view. As I mentioned, it's sort of now in the start menu under this recommended tab, which I think works much better. And then we have this new widgets button. So this is uh, essentially the news and interest thing that Microsoft rolled out a few months ago, but on Windows 11. It has the time at the top here, as well as our weather, uh, finances, sports, top stories, uh, and all of that good stuff. If we uh, go up here, you can see we can manage our private dashboard, interests, and so on and so forth. So yes, Microsoft is essentially just rebranding news and interests as widgets on Windows 11. Uh, and this is what that looks like. Of course, since this is Windows, it supports dark mode. If we go into themes here and enable uh, the dark version of the Windows theme, you get the familiar looking Windows dark theme of the dark start menu and whatnot. And uh, I think this looks really nice. Uh, Microsoft has also rounded off the corners on context menus. So these look quite nice now. Of course, they support the light theme as well, uh, but this is what they look like in dark theme. Uh, and that is the case inside File Explorer as well. Microsoft has also updated a whole bunch of sounds on Windows 11, uh, most of which are sort of new slash ported from Windows 10X. So we'll play a couple of them for you now. And there you have it. So uh, there's also some touch improvements. I filmed this bit separately because it makes more sense to be able to see my hands as I interact with the display. So I'll cut to that now. Microsoft has also improved touch interaction on Windows 11. There's now a new gesture layer that allows you to manipulate Windows with three or four fingers. So I can use three or four fingers to swipe this app down or I can uh, bring it back and then I can even open task view with that same UI. And if I have multiple desktops open like so, I can use four fingers to touch and hold and then swipe between my virtual desktops, which is quite nice. In addition to that, Microsoft has also added a bunch of subtle animations that sort of make it easier to manipulate Windows with touch. For example, if I were to grab the title bar here, you'll see that um, it sort of shrinks in to let me know that I've, I have in fact grabbed it. Uh, and then of course you can uh, full screen it and stuff just like that. Uh, but in addition to that, Microsoft has also made, I think they've made hitboxes bigger for resizing the actual Windows. So I can sort of touch really far out and the window will grab onto my finger anyway. So that's that's a nice change as well. All of this just makes using touch on Windows 11 uh, much nicer. It's also worth mentioning that the actual dedicated tablet mode is gone on Windows 11. There's no button for it in the action center here. Uh, Microsoft, I think, just expects you to use touch in the desktop environment because of the improvements they've made to things like the animations. Of course, you can still do things like snapping. So if I snap two apps side by side here, um, I should be able to snap just like that and also I sort of drag these along just like I would in tablet mode anyway. Microsoft has also updated the Windows Ink workspace on Windows 11. It's now fully customizable, which means I can actually pin any um, creative app I want, or in fact, any app I want, but I feel like you'd want to <laughs> pin apps that utilize the pen. Uh, so you can see I can choose any app I like here. And um, I've already pinned a few of them. I've pinned OneNote, Paint, and the Snipping tool. If I click on one of those, that will obviously take me into Paint, and then I can start drawing as you would expect. So that is pretty nice. A couple more things. Swiping in from the left now opens the widgets view rather than um, task view. Uh, the right still opens action center, of course. Uh, but more importantly, the animation involved when rotating the display is much smoother on Windows 11. It's almost iPad-like. Uh, not quite, but it's definitely much better than uh, what it was like on Windows 10, which is uh, super nice. 
that's that. Let's also Microsoft has also introduced a brand new out of box experience, which was in a previous build a while ago, uh, but it's much more polished now. And there's like a new video that plays at the beginning and stuff. So I'll cut to that now. So yes, here is the out of box experience. This is the setup process you go through when unboxing and setting up a new PC with Windows 11 pre-installed. Uh, so we choose our language as per usual uh, and then keyboard layouts. Then we will be asked to connect to a Wi-Fi network, which we can do now. Then it will check for updates. Then of course we have to agree to the license agreement, which we will have to read word for word, of course. Uh, and then we should be asked to log in. So now we're being asked to sign in with a Microsoft account. Uh, there doesn't appear to be an option to sign in locally. I'm sure if you disconnect from the internet, that will give you a local account option. But as of right now, there, does not a, there doesn't appear to be a way to sign in with a local account, only a Microsoft account. So we'll do that now. Let's do our pin here. So this is a new page. Here we have an option to restore from OneDrive. So this will restore settings and preferences, sync OneDrive files and select apps to install from this device. I don't know where, what this backup is, so I'll select it. But you can also set it up as a new device down here. Uh, so let's do that. And I, well, there you go. That's it, I guess. Uh, <laughs> there's no other buttons you need to press in the restore process. It will just do it all for you. We can also customize our experience, which I believe this is new to Windows 11. So depending on which PC you've bought, you may want it for gaming. You may want it for schoolwork. You may be using it for business reasons, whatever. Uh, so here we are going to be playing some games. We're going to be doing some schoolwork and we're going to be creating some ideas using whatever. So press ex accept. I don't really know what that does. Uh, but I guess we'll see in a second. And now we can choose to store files on OneDrive automatically or only on this device. Let's store on OneDrive, why not? Now let's see what's new from Windows. And I think that's basically it for the out-of-box experience. This should take us to the desktop now. Uh, this UI is also slightly improved. Um, and by improved, I mean they've got a sort of nicer animation behind the text, which will show up in just a second. Um, here, there it is. Kind of like the PS2 background, the PS2 sort of dashboard background, whatever they used to call that. So yeah, that's basically it. This will take us to the Windows 11 desktop UX uh, and then to everything you've already seen. So that's pretty cool. So there you have it. That's a quick look at Windows 11. Like I said, this is not final. There's still more stuff that Microsoft is likely going to unveil at their event next week. So tune into that. This isn't everything. Uh, but yeah, that's basically everything for this build specifically, 21996. Thanks so much for watching and we shall see you in the next one. Bye-bye.